Young Tov, it's Thursday, the 9th of August, 2018, and it is Stephen Brock here with another Messianic moment for you. But first, of course, let's get the administrative stuff out of the way. Go to the right side, click on, oh, you're right, the right side, click on the little subscribe button and leave me your email address so that I can send you a notification of when I have a new posting. Um, please, I'm not going to sell your emails or anything, just uh, if you like what you hear, all you have to do is just click on that subscribe. I really appreciate it. And if you're watching the video in the bottom right hand corner on the Messianic Moment icon, click that'll subscribe you to my YouTube channel. But please also go to MessianicMoment.com and subscribe there because I don't always do a video. And it's done almost. My third book, Parashot Rashim, commentaries on every one of the 54 different Parashot or Parsha which is the portion of the Torah being read on Shabbat. And I'm just proofing it out now. I'm trying to get it done. I want to have it out by uh, at least the third week of September because Shemini Atzeret is October 1st, which is when we roll back the Torah. Perfect timing for the book. So uh, keep an eye out for that on my website, MessianicMoment.com. And uh, when it's available, it will be available both in the heart. In, I'm sorry, in a soft copy like this, and also it will be available on Kindle. So today we're talking about kaleidoscopes, and I think they are really beautiful works of art. And um, in case some of you aren't familiar with what a kaleidoscope is, let's go take a look, and we'll take a look at what one looks like when you look inside of it. Ready? Let's look. Wow, wasn't that beautiful? Kaleidoscopes are really, really cool. And you know, all you need to make one is a, a paper tube, some clear plastic, some black construction paper, wax paper, saran wrap, and a lot of colorful sequins of confetti. It's actually pretty easy to make one, you know? And once you have it completed, simply by turning the tube, which manipulates the items within the kaleidoscope, you can create any number of different images, all formed by the same materials. Yeah, and what, what does this have to do with the Bible? Good question. Now, in a kaleidoscope, we always have the same colors, but the way they are mixed up and manipulated, meaning how they're physically positioned, can result in a myriad of different images and colors. You may not even see the same combination of color and image twice. I like to propose that the Bible is like a kaleidoscope in that within it are many words just like the many different colored sequins. And we can form many different messages by the way we manipulate or turn those words around. Now, someone reading a passage in the Bible may get a totally different meaning than someone else reading the same passage, even though they're reading the same words. And the explana explanation or critical meaning of a biblical text is called exegesis. And a Jewish form of exegesis is called Pardes, which stands for, well, the P means Peshat, the plain or the literal meaning of the words. The R for Remez, that's a deeper, more spiritual meaning. You know, this is the level at which Yeshua taught, which I think may be why so many couldn't understand him. There's the Drash, which is a spiritual meaning explained through a comparative story, such as, for example, the parables Yeshua used. And then finally, there is the Sud, which is a deep mystical meaning. And, you know, that's the best definition I can give for it. So how many times have you experienced someone telling you what something in the Bible means by taking a little from here, a little from there, putting it together, maybe mixing it up a bit and saying, this is the truth because it is all found in the Bible. And sometimes it seems to make sense. So you wonder if maybe there aren't a something I run into this too often, <laughs> and I will continually run into it so long as people teach from the Bible. There are many people, unfortunately, who want the Bible passages to mean 
what they wanted to mean, and not always what God intended for us to know. And by using what I'm going to call kaleidoscope exegesis, they can make the Bible say just about anything they wanted to say. And this is what they teach others as God's absolute gospel. And it is often a total lie. I believe the Bible does have many lessons, and that at any given passage, even when taken in the proper cultural, hermeneutic, and linguistical context, can have a different message for different people. The Bible is that deep. It's, it's so deep we can all be swimming in it, and at the same time, all be at different levels inside of it. And we're going to get different messages. That's why it's very much a kaleidoscope. And because of that, we need to be very, very careful whenever we read it, and especially careful when we are taught by others what something in the Bible means. Again, just like looking into a kaleidoscope, I can never get enough of the Bible because every time I look into it, I see beautiful imagery and colorful statements that make me feel good. The Bible is beautiful. It is full of wonderful things to read and life-changing lessons to learn. It is a multifaceted item, and as such, it needs to be read over and over with discernment and spiritual insight, actually from the heart, because the heart is where wisdom is. And that comes with experience, faith, and most important of all, the indwelling Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, to help us make sense out of the many different colors and images we see. So read the Bible. Listen to others who teach about it, and always trust in God to show you the truth that He has in there for you. There is something for everyone in the Bible. And when I turn that kaleidoscope, I might see something different than you do, even though we're both looking through the same thing. So trust in God, and ask that the Ruach, the Spirit, show you what God wants you to see. Hallelujah. So again, thank you for listening. I appreciate your being there. I welcome your comments. Please always be nice and have a good day. May you be blessed for the rest of the day. And lehi See you next time.